Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnanke and in today's session we will be discussing about the endochondral ossification. So in the previous sessions we have seen how the bond cells are taking part in the process of ossification and we have seen intramembranous ossification in detail and in today's session we will be going deep into the endochondral ossification or cartilaginous ossification. What is endochondral ossification? That is the first question, right? The process of gradual bond formation derived out of the embryonic mesenchymal stem cells with an intermediate cartilaginous model is termed as endochondral ossification. So here we know the gradual process of bond formation is ossification. But here in endochondral ossification, as the name suggests, the chondral refers to the cartilage, right? Chondrocytes, chondroblasts, they are nothing but the cartilage cells. So here, there will be an intermediate cartilage model stage and that's what make it different from that of the membrane ossification. So there will be a model formed out of the cartilage and that will later get replaced by the bond cells and finally forming a complete bond. So that process or the transformation is termed as the endochondral ossification. So let's see like which are the stages of endochondral ossification. First one is the cartilaginous model formation. So the cartilage model will be formed. Later there will be periosteal collar formation, medullary cavity formation, secondary ossification center formation and the final stage is nothing but the complete bond formation. So these are the five stages and we will be seeing them each in detail. So the first stage as you can see here that is the cartilage model formation. So here I have a simple representation of the same where you can see the blue color framework or like a model of the bond and this is called as the cartilage model. And in the center you can see an orange color area that is nothing but the primary ossification center that we will be discussing in the further stages. So first there will be a cartilaginous model made out of the chondroblast and with a covering membrane called as the perichondrium. So the perichondrium is nothing but the outer membrane covering of the cartilaginous model. And in the second stage, there is an important thing happening that is called as a periosteal collar formation. So we will see how it happens in stages. So the central portion of this particular bond, so when you consider this particular bond over here, which I am touching right now, so this bond will have three parts. We will have two end parts and a middle shaft part, right? There will be upper end, shaft and lower end that we have studied in the osteology part. So here, the central part of the shaft part is called as the diaphysis and the end portions, end portions over here are termed as the epiphysis. So in the mid region of the diaphysis, the cells which forms the primary ossification center, at that region, the cells will start hypertrophying. What do you mean by hypertrophy? It will get enlarged. So the cells will get enlarged and that is where the calcification starts. And along with that, there will be a small nutrient artery that penetrates into the perichondrium causing the stimulation of osteoblast in that region. And you can see slightly brown color region here in the diaphysis on either side of diaphysis. That is nothing but the periosteal collar bone. And those periosteal bone collar is formed by vascularization of the perichondrium. So that is the second stage. So we have seen the cartilaginous model and the second one is periosteal collar formation. Now we will see the third part that is where the primary ossification center which was placed in the middle in the mid region that will start expanding towards the both ends. So here you can see it. It is getting expanded within the diaphysis towards the two end of the bones. That is the third stage. Then we have the medullary cavity formation. So we are only considering the mid region that is the diaphysis now where there will be calcification process happening and now you can see the whole thing is like colored in light brown color and that represents the spongy bone trabeculae. Spongy bone and compact bone these are the two types of bone that you have to study later. So here the diaphysis will be replaced by the spongy bone and the spongy bone 
itself will get broken down in the mid region forming a cavity over there and that cavity is called as the medullary cavity. So you can see the medullary cavity here and that medullary cavity will be filled by the red bone marrow. So that is clear, right? And the spongy bone over here in the diaphysis region slowly get, gets replaced by the compact bone and the medullary cavity remains in the center region. So as a gradual process, the whole spongy bone will be replaced in the mid region in the shaft region or diaphysis region with the compact bone and the cavity remains there itself. And the next stage that is the secondary ossification center formation where I have told you about the epiphysis, right? The two ends of the bone. So this epiphyseal region will start developing the secondary ossification centers. So here you can see the two ossification centers. They are the secondary ossification centers. But there will be one difference when the ossification completes. In the center region you have seen there is a cavity formation happening in the middle. But in case of secondary ossification centers, there won't be formation of a medullary cavity. So that is the difference between the primary ossification center here and the secondary ossification center. And after all this process, there comes the final stage where the actual bone is formed. But you can see the blue color area here. Two thick lines you can represent the articular surface or the surface of the bone which articulates with the other bones. You can see clearly it is covered by a thin layer of hyaline cartilage. That is nothing but the remnant of this particular cartilage model itself. And along with that you can see where the diaphysis meets the epiphysis, there you can see a plate of cartilage. And that cartilage plate is termed as the epiphyseal plate or this particular growth plate. So this particular area is called as either epiphyseal plate or the growth plate. And why it is called like that? Because the growth plate is capable of increasing the length of the bone. So from here itself, the bone will be growing. So the layers of this particular cartilage will further develop into mature bone cells and that will increase the length of the diaphysis and that is how the length of the bone increases. So that concludes the complete stage of endochondral ossification. So let's have a quick revision. We have the first one, the cartilaginous model. Then in the mid region, the hypertrophy of the cells happens and the calcification begins and there will be formation of the periosteal collar. In the third stage, what happens? There will be the primary ossification center that expands or enlarges towards the either ends. And in the third phase, after the third phase, we have the formation of medullary cavity. And in the next phase, there will be formation of secondary ossification center and Particularly the diaphysis region, the spongy bone will be replaced by the compact bone to provide strength for the shaft because it is the weight bearing part, right? And finally, the complete bone is formed with the presence of remaining hyaline cartilage on the articular surface as well as the epiphyseal plate region. So, this particular epiphyseal plate will just disappear as the ossification gets completed. So it happens by the age of around 21. So it depends on each individual bonds. Some of the bonds will get ossified earlier as well. So this concludes the session on the endochondral ossification. Thank you.